What is up everybody and welcome back to the BB bus where I share content about my life here in my self-converted school bus. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, go ahead and hit that button down below so you don't miss any future videos and so you can go dig back through some of my previous content so you can get to know how I built this a little bit better. I'd also encourage you to head over to Instagram and give me a follow at bbia underscore bus. I post more daily content there so you can see really what it's like to live here in the bus and follow me along on some of my adventures. Today we are continuing our look at the Zero Breeze Mark II portable air conditioner. If you haven't seen my unboxing and initial overview video, I'll put a tag up here so you can go check that out before you watch this video. Today we're going to run a couple short tests on this so we can see how it stacks up in real life against what it's advertised to do online. We're looking for three things today. Number one, we're going to time how long it takes to go from powering on to pushing out cold air. Number two, we're going to see if it can actually do a 28 degree Fahrenheit difference relative to the air surrounding it. So online it says that it can do a 28 degree difference. That would mean that if it's 78 degrees in here right now, it could put out 50 degree Fahrenheit air. And number three, we're gonna take a look at the total power draw that it puts on my batteries. Now keep in mind that I have not hardwired this to my batteries. So I am going through my inverter right now. So I'm expecting that the actual draw coming off of my batteries is gonna be a little bit higher than what is advertised online. We're gonna see how it stacks up, and once it's actually installed and hardwired to my batteries, we'll be able to compare what we get today off of what we get in the future to see how much of a difference going through my inverter actually made. So, without further ado, let's get this thing plugged in, powered on, and let's see what we get. Keep an eye on the front of this unit. This little screen right here will tell you the temperature of the air that is coming out. So keep an eye right there. That's gonna be important. I'll put a timer on the screen so we can see live time, how quick it's getting down to temp. And then we'll compare starting point at 91 to our settling point once it gets cold. And then we'll take a look at my phone and we'll check the watts that is drawing when it's on versus when it's off. So let's get this plugged in and do some tests. Okay, it's powered on. I put it in strong mode so that it can be as powerful as possible and ideally as quick and as cold as possible. So let's see what it does. take a quick look at the power draw right now while it's on. I'm gonna turn it off, I'm gonna turn my inverter off, and we're gonna see how much power is being drawn by whatever's left right now. My lights, my fridge may be running, I'm not sure what other accessories are going right now. So we're gonna do a little math, subtract the difference, and we're gonna see what the total power draw of the Zero Breeze Mark II air conditioner is while it's running full blast. So let's watch my phone while I turn things off, and we're gonna be able to see the difference once it's off. So after powering it on and running it until it settled at a colder temp, we're able to analyze some of our results. So timing how long it took to hit 65 degrees after starting at 93, if you remember seeing this reading. Starting here at 93 and then dropping down to 65, that's our 28 degree Fahrenheit temp difference. Now, yes, if you look online, they advertise a 30 degree 
Fahrenheit temperature difference. Maybe if I ran this for another little while, it would register 30 degrees difference, but I don't know if that would be because now it's dropped general temp in here by a couple degrees or not. In the user manual, it does say 28 degrees temp difference. So that's what I'm gonna measure off of. Just to be aware, the website says 30, the user manual says 28, and little differences there. We were able to get the 28 degree difference in eight minutes and 40 seconds. So that's pretty good because the website also advertises 10 minutes to reach cooling effect. So we did that in under 10 minutes. Maybe that's because our relative temperature was pretty high. Maybe it would be a little bit longer if it's having to work much harder to cool already pretty cool air. That's just hypothesizing. So there's test one and test number two. We're pretty close to 30 degree temp difference. If you go off the website, we are on it. If you go off the user manual for our 28 degree temperature difference, and it took less than 10 minutes to reach cooling temperature. If we take a look at the footage that we got from our power comparison, we can see that we started off consuming about 380 watts. And then once we turn this off and we turn the inverter off, we dropped down to about 90 watts. So we were left with somewhere in between 280, 290 watts power consumption for this plus the inverter. Yes, the user manual says it's rated for 240 watts. If we take what we measured, 280 watts, times that by the poorest inverter efficiencies, which is about 80%, we get 230 watts. So if we estimate our inverter efficiency to be between 80 and 90% efficient, we're gonna be left with between 230 and 245 watts. So that's right in the range with what this should actually consume if we remove the inefficiencies of the inverter. So I'm expecting that once I hardwire this to my batteries, it'll sit right around 240 watts on full power mode. After seeing those results, I'm gonna let you make your own conclusions about what you think of this. I think they're pretty close to what we see online as well as in the user manual. So you're going to get what you should expect out of this unit. Now in response to a little bit of the feedback that I got from my previous video, again, do your due diligence, do your research on this, do your research on other options, figure out what's going to work best in your situation, right? Everything's going to work differently for a different person. So this may not work for you. Another unit may work for you better. This may be exactly what you're looking for. I don't have a lot of options when I'm considering alternatives, so this is going to work as best as anything else in my situation. No, 2300BTU, I'm not really expecting it to make huge temperature differences overall in my space, especially when it's 104 degrees outside and I am sitting in the full sun. Like I'm literally sweating right now, partly because this is off so I, that you can hear me, but also because it's still probably 98 degrees outside, even though the sun is starting to go down. It, I have no cooling in here right now. This is off. No matter what, I'm going to be hot. So certain applications, this will work well. If you aim this at you, you will literally get 30 degrees cooler air blowing at your zone than the air surrounding you. So that's going to cool you down. Will it cool the entire space? That remains to be seen once I do a more thorough test, once I get it installed. So. That is it for this video. We ran our three quick tests. We got pretty accurate results to what we expected based on our assumptions we made from the online advertisement. It may perform differently in different conditions. These are the conditions that I tested it under, so that's what we got out of it. Anyways, that is it for this video. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for following along. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and like this video if you enjoyed the little testing that we ran on this unit. and. We'll see you in the next one here in the BBO bus. Thanks again. Bye.